Time to make a video. Let's see what's going on on the internet today. Do, 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 do. What's this new article from Polygon today? Streamer Amaranth is the latest example of Twitch thought harassment problem. Oh boy, this is gonna be a good one. Let's take a look at this here. Oh, okay, that's a that's an interesting picture they decided to use. Oh, all right, I'm just uh, uh huh, uh huh. Okay, definitely gotta make a note of that. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, 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 yeah. That's a, that's a good point too. This is gonna be such a good video. I'm gonna have so many things I can talk about on here. Yep. Yeah, oh, 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 that's that's a, that's a good part. That's a good part too. Wait, what is? Okay, that doesn't even make. That doesn't even make sense. Oh man, this is gonna be. It's gonna be such a good video. I'm gonna have so much stuff to talk about. Oh, 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 and that part too. Okay, okay. All right. I think that's enough information for my video there. So I can go ahead and get started on record. Oh, what's that? Oh, notification here. Oh, PewDiePie made a video. Cool. Um. Yeah, I have time. I'll take a take a break before I get my video started. Watch that real quick. Oh, hey, it's about Twitch victims. Streamer bleh, is latest example of Twitch thought harassment problem. Oh, what the? Wow. F How's it going, everybody? It's uh, it's your boy, baby bear, baby bear tickles. <laughs> Such a stupid name. So I'm back again today with another uh, another video, another commentary video, because apparently that's what this channel is turning into is. Uh, my, my personal commentary. So an article came out by Polygon about uh, a streamer named Amaranth titled Streamer Amaranth is latest example of Twitch thought harassment problem. I was gonna do I was gonna do a video on this when I when I read it and I looked into the information a little bit because I I had some opinions on it and then I saw that uh, PewDiePie came out with a video that addressed pretty much uh, everything that I was gonna say. Um, you know he, he talked about the the use of he talked about the use of a particular picture in the in the article there's only one image in the entire article by the way and it's the one image that if you google her name come pretty much is the only one that comes up without her showing a massive amount of cleavage they seem pretty biased about why people are not fans of girls who stream and and uh intentionally just sort of show their cleavage off to to get views and get donations um you know, I, I, I mean, for the most part, there's, uh, he, he touched on pretty much everything. Um, there, there are a couple points I wanted to make that he didn't really touch on that I feel uh, are kind of important. Um, but first, the, a rundown of the situation. So, Amaranth is a streamer who, she's been streaming for about two years now, I believe. And uh, her main thing is she, she does IRL streams, so she, you know, IRL short or is abbreviation for in real life. So she just sort of walks around and, and talks or sits in her chair and just chats or whatever. Um, she does a lot of ASMR stuff, which is like the, you know, you get real close. You get real close to the mic and you just make very soothing noises and it's supposed to relax the viewer. Uh, typically they'll do something like this where they'll whisper, they'll, they'll whisper into the mic and it's supposed to relax you. Or they'll do things like uh, get something that makes a sound and do it right next to the mic. Something like this, where they'll just uh, this nice little relaxing sound like that. Is that something? Is that turning you on? Is this something you're into? Oh, oops. Sorry. So for the most part, that's that's kind of what she does. Is she she does a little ASMR stuff and, and talks on talks to the camera and like you know relates to the the viewer or whatever. Some of them she'll go to a gym and just kind of stretch or whatever the hell it is that you call you call this. Uh, it was it was recently revealed that uh, she'd been hiding a relationship from her viewers, and a lot of the people who follow her thought that that was um, a bit underhanded. The ar the argument is that. Uh, she's hiding her relationship for the sake of getting more donations because if she, you know, pretends to be single, then some people would give her donations in order to gain favor with her to potentially uh, request her hand in, in matrimony or something. She essentially defended herself by saying that she feels that a lot of her donations don't come to her because of people who are romantically interested um, and that most of her donations just come from people who are supportive of what she does and and want her to succeed um and while while that that can't be true the fact that you would sort of sort of deny the fact that there are people out there who think they could gain favor with you romantically by doing this is 
a little bit disingenuous you know it's it's a little bit misleading i, f I feel like even if it's not the majority to, to say that they don't do it is uh it seems a little bit dishonest you know uh, the article makes a point that you know it's it's not really her responsibility to disclose her her uh you know her love life or any any personal details about her and to that the argument is that not only did she not disclose any information about it she also intentionally misled people by uh not just not saying anything about it but also flat out lying about it and pretending to be single um there are some video clips of of her talking about being single and you know not being into the dating scene right now but you know that's there, there's a difference between not disclosing something and flat out lying about it like those are two completely different things and you know if you don't really see the difference between the two i don't really know what to say to help you but there's there's a pretty big difference all of this stuff uh pewdiepie sort of covered in his video um except for one thing that i thought was pretty interesting that he didn't cover because his whole point in his video was that uh polygon was very one-sided and um very uh, intentionally misleading with their article. The point that they're trying to get across is is valid though, because the point they're trying to get across is that of all of the of the streamers, her situation is different because not only is she being being harassed and being called a Twitch thought, which is something that I think every woman has to deal with now on Twitch, she's also being doxxed. Like her information is being leaked to the public and not just like the fact that she she is or was married, which I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, her her home address, her home phone number, address of people who are associated with her, her marriage certificate, like a bunch of different things are being uh, released to the public and uh, you know PewDiePie didn't really address it in his video which I thought was the other end of the spectrum of, of you know skewing information to get your point across and, and being one-sided. So you know I'm, I'm taking both sides here and sort of seeing uh, a, a bit of a trend where both sides are intentionally not disclosing certain information so that they can push their own narrative across. You know, when, when I when I saw this video and I, and I saw PewDiePie did that, I decided to look back at the article just to make sure that, you know, there was actually something in there about that. And it's, it's worded a little bit weird because in the article uh, she made claims that she was being doxxed. So I thought about that and, you know, um, it's kind of hard to take everything that she says completely 100% at face value. You know, you have to take everything with a bit of a grain of salt. You know, was she really doxxed or not? So, you know, I, I gave uh, Pewds the pass on that one until I saw a video from the guy who actually broke the entire story to begin with. It was actually pointed out by a channel called L of the Day, which is the one that originally broke the story. Um, he, he said this. Someone has offered me your home address, your actual home address. Someone has offered me your phone number, your direct phone number, not your business phone number. Someone has offered me Nick Lee's phone number. Someone has offered me your marriage license, your actual marriage license, proving that you in fact got married. The official document, I don't even know how they got that. They have offered me the addresses and phone numbers of Nick Lee's family members. They have offered me the phone recordings of conversations with those family members and I have turned all of it down. Not some of it, I've turned all of it down. So basically based off of that, I can I can deduce that uh, she actually did have her information um, leaked or, or hacked or, or whatever. Essentially she was doxxed for, you know, everything that had, that had been done. And the reason that people have been doxxing her is because they felt personally slighted by the fact that she didn't disclose her information, you know, about the fact that she was married. If, if you're going to make an argument about something, if you're going to make a point, uh, do it honestly. I'm under the school of thought that, you know, you should give somebody enough rope to hang themselves with. I know it's a bit morbid, you know, especially a morbid way of putting it, but essentially what it means is that if you let somebody do what they're doing or speak out about what they're going to do, they will, they will give you enough information for you to essentially crush all of their arguments, especially if their arguments are completely flawed. In this case, everybody was pissed off because she said that she was single when it came to light that, you know, it was possible that she was married. Now, apparently she's come out with another video saying that that was something in her past, so I'm not really sure what the information is at this point. Is she married or is she divorced now? If she is divorced, 
she actually has an argument there. She has a case to be made because then essentially it goes back to you don't have to disclose all of your personal information from your past or even, you know, even in your in your present or whatever. If you intentionally lie about it, that's when it becomes an issue. But if she actually is in fact divorced, then she didn't lie about anything. She just didn't disclose the fact that she had somebody she was married to in the past. You know, you can make that argument too. But the thing is, before she even had a chance to make that argument, she was doxxed, you know, she, she was completely massacred by uh, a bunch of people who felt slighted by her instead of giving her a chance to explain herself. What that does essentially is that ruins your stance. It ruins the ground that you have to stand on for the people who, for the people who are against her or the people who doxxed her. When you threaten someone's livelihood or someone's safety, you lose whatever ground you stand on. Like, a few bad apples shouldn't be able to spoil the entire bunch when it comes to something like this but the reality of the world is that that's exactly what happens how many how many times has that happened where there there's a cause or a movement that happens that that goes on and you know you have a few assholes who uh go and take it a step beyond what it should be and then the entire movement is associated with that you know you see that with like the black lives matter movement where you had a few people who were harming others in in the name of that movement and it completely derailed any other argument that they had they were only associated with the most violent people you'll get any protest that happened from uh any any innocent person being shot by a cop or something and and people protesting the the group of people who would then go on and riot that's what gets shown on the media that's that's what the news covers and um it sucks for the entire movement but that's that's just that's just the way of the world. People are going to take that and they're going to use that as a uh, as ammo against you. Essentially, you've essentially made her a victim now at this point. So the the entire discussion doesn't matter anymore because what essentially matters is the fact that despite everything else, this is where it went too far. So therefore, this person is the one that we're going to be rooting for. This is the person in the right. So you know, I'm, I'm not really I'm not saying. Uh, what she did was right or wrong because again I don't know what the actual information is people talk about how she was married she talks about how that was in the past I don't really know for sure but at this point it doesn't matter because people blow things out of proportion and when you do that reason ceases to exist and the thing is when when you you're not using reason for your stance people on the opposite side don't see it as a legitimate argument you know it's it's one of the reasons that uh that i feel our country is so divided right now because you know instead of instead of speaking from a place of reason and trying to understand where the other person is coming from and trying to hear their explanation and debunking it instead we're not even letting people speak and we're not even letting people try to defend themselves and and a perfect example of this is if i say something like this the immediate response to this is well, do uh, you know? Do do white supremacists or Nazis should they deserve a chance to to defend themselves or, or speak for themselves? And that's exactly my point. You're going immediately to the opposite extreme. Uh, not everybody who believes a certain thing is the extreme of that thing. So it seems like every every thing that comes up now, every debate, every discussion, every controversy, is always. The, the everybody on one side of the argument and then everybody on the other side of the argument on both ends of the extremes screaming at each other and meanwhile the act, the actual situation is 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 right here whoops sorry the actual situation is right here in the middle and that's where most people sort of lie like most people are in this little range right here but then the people out here ruin it for the rest of us so you know that, that can be said with anything. It can be said with politics. It can be said with, you know, uh, politics. I don't want to get into a whole political thing here because this isn't a political channel. So I'm, I'll just, I'll leave it at that. But the main thing is that I want to be the voice of reason. And this is, this is a problem that plagues this particular issue that I'm talking about today. But it also plagues just about every other issue going around. So that's, that's kind of why I took it there for a sec. But the main point I'm getting across is that while she may have done something wrong and the people who are mad at her may have a valid point or a valid reason to be angry or upset with her, the fact that you would take it to the point of doxing her information and putting her in danger 
officially loses loses any credibility your entire stance has at that point. Is it fair? No, it's not fair that you can have a valid argument and it won't matter because somebody else who was a bigger asshole than you just ruined it for everyone else. But as much as it sucks, that's just how it is. People people deal with extremes. People will take the most extreme point of view and they will use that to argue against. That's just the way things seem to work now. And it sucks, but like, you know, everybody just, you know, they seem to be in their own bubble of information. And when the only thing that they'll hear from the opposing side is the most extreme point of view, instead of having a logical uh, debate about it or a discussion where they'll hear the more intricate details of a situation. Essentially, what they're doing is just trying to shut up anybody who is, is against that opinion. And it's like the, the co their cause is noble. I do agree with their cause to you know, make it a more safe and accepting environment for female streamers. But the execution sort of leaves something to be desired, because essentially what they're doing is just ignoring all criticism or, or passing it off as, six, uh, as sexism or, you know, slut shaming or whatever, when they actually do have legitimate grievances. Like most of the people who are upset with Twitch thoughts are streamers themselves, people who have to abide by these rules that Twitch puts into place and then they're watching these other streamers get, you know, thousands upon thousands more followers and people watching them. And they're doing it because they do things that go explicitly against the terms and services of Twitch. You know, they'll, they'll do this, they'll, they'll blatantly break the rules and they won't have any repercussions for it. Not until they do something extreme, like flat out twerk on camera or, you know, hike their boobs up on purpose or some shit like that. They have to do something pretty extreme to actually get you know, a 24 hour, 24 hour ban. Uh, and, and that's just not the same treatment that most other streamers get. When you're, when you're talking about the situation, you have to bring both sides into account to, to find a, a healthy common middle ground. So that's, that's, that's my, that's my main point in this article, because, you know, it, it feels like Polygon intentionally, uh, skewed the information to get a certain point across to, to push their narrative and, PewDiePie's video response to it also sort of uh, di didn't disclose certain information and he left certain things out so they could push his narrative. And uh, the fact of the matter is the truth is somewhere in the middle. So some women actually do just, you know, show off their body for money. And is that a bad thing inherently? No, no, I don't think it's a bad thing to use what you have and use something that you work on, such as your body, to get money. I am personally under the under the belief that prostitution should be legal because it's your body, you should be able to do what you want, and if there's a demand for it, why not, you know? That's just my personal opinion. Um, but in this particular situation, Twitch has uh, very specific rules against this, and there are other websites you can go to where you can be a cam girl or whatever and like make money off of that, but Twitch is not one of those platforms. Twitch is a platform that's supposed to be for gaming, for communicating with your audience, for connecting with the community. And to be honest, even even her ASMR videos, like Emirates ASMR videos are perfectly fine. Are they a little bit like, you know, weird and, and you know, somewhat like you, you it's like sexual, right? Like it's a little bit sexual. Even if like you're not turned on turned on by it, you look at that and you're like, there's definitely a fetish for that shit. Somebody has a kink for that shit. You know, but that's that's still that's still fine. There's no rules against that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's totally okay to do something like that, just not on this platform. So, so Polygon defending her on that, defending her on just, well, she's just a woman with a nice body and blah, blah, blah. There's certain particular rules that are set in place that specifically address what she does. And that's not okay to just completely disregard that. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, uh, no, it doesn't matter how wrong she is or what she did that, that, you know, set people off to go as far as doxing her information that that's taken it a step too far and now you've turned this into a completely different situation i i wouldn't be surprised honestly honestly if there is a news article around this whole situation that focused on the fact that male uh gaming fans are chauvinists and you know don't accept women in gaming don't accept women on media and are trying to push them out of the nerd culture because uh because you know we're we're all a bunch of gatekeepers or something like that. Fact of the matter is, most people I know are excited to have female gamers, female streamers, uh, women in the community who are, you know, making making names for themselves and are actually like legitimate uh, 
honest, great people. But, you know, you're going to get the few trolls who do shit like this, where they dock somebody or, you know, uh, give out death threats to, to women, that they're going to be the main focus of the of the story now. So, you know, prepare for something like that. We'll, we'll, we'll see how long it takes for this story to break out into actual news, news articles. I don't know. That's my take. You know, it's... It kind of goes along the lines of what I talked about before with fanaticism and, and you know, people going overboard with, with stuff and only seeing one side of something and completely disregarding everything else. It all it all falls under the same umbrella. So this is just another example of that. And, um, yeah, hopefully hopefully I can I can help somebody see reason or help, hopefully I can, can talk about this story in a way that sort of shines some light on the entirety of the problem and not just one side of it because i feel like everywhere you go it's always going to be one side or the other so uh when it comes to stuff like this just uh, take everything you can with a grain of salt um hear both sides of the argument don't just give don't just make up your opinions based off of what somebody else says hear what everybody has to say and then deduce your opinion from it from there that's uh, that's pretty much all i have to say about the situation so uh, like, comment, subscribe if, if you enjoyed, and you know, leave some comments in there. Tell me, tell me what you think of the situation. Let me know if there's any information that I missed out on, uh, if there's anything that you know you feel I should have addressed that I didn't, because I do, I do have a lot of opinions on this, but it's it's also kind of hard to have a have a more free flowing discussion about it and write something down and go by you know a piece of paper at the same time. So there's probably stuff that I missed that, that I didn't talk about. Um, so if there's anything that you wanted me to talk about, feel free to leave it in the comments. Um, if there's if there's anything I brought to light that you were uh, wowed by, you know, let me know. I, I'm I'm always I'm always up for, uh, for for praises. I'm up for criticism. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. First of all, <laughs> this is the photo that they chose to represent this individual. <laughs> Meanwhile, any article from Polygon, they'll grab the ugliest in screenshot they can find from the video. It's hilarious. Like, what? what is this? How also, if you Google the name of this individual, you get a wide arrangement of uh, different type of photographs. But of course, there's